Yes, I think Mr. Pankaj has joined. Yeah, Shafali, I'm here now. Hi, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Pankaj. Good evening, Ashish. Good to see you. Finally, great. I think participants will join in. Uh, you know, they keep flowing in. So, uh, in the interest of time, we'll just wait uh, wait for another one minute, and then we'll start for the session. Sure. sure. Good to see you smiling amongst everything. <laughs> that is the yeah. most important. That is the most important thing, which uh, gradually and uh, definitely defines the uh, personality of a. Generally, when we meet CEOs, we are very scared. They are very serious. We are not supposed to talk much. We are supposed to talk finance. So, <clears throat> great. Oh, uh, good evening, friends. Uh, and. Uh, Good evening, Mr. Bankar. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Ashish Bankar. Uh, this is our second series of CEO and HR then and now. And uh, this time we have partnered uh, bringing this program together with the Young Minds and a dear friend Shifani. So with this program, while we had done the last session last time and uh, you know, it was in terms of knowing CEOs better from an HR perspective, uh, because not much has been spoken about the cordial relationship between two of the sections, but both of them are indispensable. And you know, this journey of understanding, specifically from uh, the business leader, will help the HR professionals and the young uh, individuals to know them better, to get a chance to speak to them. And uh, today we have a very special person, and we are uh, whatever little I've spoken to him. So this, you know, a brief summary will be inappropriate to define him, but I will try my level best to. So while this is the second series, today we have uh, Mr. Pankaj Dubey, CEO and President of uh, Dispin Consulting. Mr. Pankaj has an illustrious career spanning over two decades. He has been recognized as top 50 Indian icon in 2016, Black Book Top 100 Luxury in 2016, a TEDx speaker and an intellectual icon. Being an MBA graduate, he did uh, you know, various leadership programs from Miami, Kolkata, ISB, and Polaris. So the leadership, as we always understand, comes from within as well as you know, comes of understanding the programs which we do. He started his professional journey in 1994 with Xcots and rose to the position of CEO and MBA. He was associated with extreme companies like Hero Motors, LML, Intex, Yamaha, and finally Polaris, where he was the CEO and MD. He continues his journey of guidance to many corporates and individuals. Academics has been a niche place in the life of Mr. Pankaj, and he is on the advisory board of Amity University, Nansa University, GLA University, and ITS. We are privileged that today we are having him here for this chat series, and you know, it would be an insightful evening for us to know him better, to know the life of a CEO better and to take insights from him and develop our lives in terms of our professional and personal. While I connected uh, with him this week, Kutsi Shefadi, and spoke for a couple of occasions, I immediately understood that he has a keen attribute for entrepreneurship and strategy. So these are the two important uh, pillars with him, which I have uh, understood. Taking this uh, discussion forward and while we understand we are grateful to have uh, Mr. Pankaj on our chat series. First important uh, thing we would you like to understand, sir, that how has been your relationship with the HR team in your companies and how do you look at them, especially in the terms of key deliverables? Yeah. So thank you, Ashish, first of all, for the introduction. And thank you, Shifali, for inviting me on this forum. Uh, you know, I always felt that if a manager has to grow in his life, he has to first become an HR manager. Because HR, as it suggests, is about human relations. And if you are not a great at human relations, you cannot be a successful manager, even if you are in manufacturing or you are in any supply chain or marketing or sales, any field that you choose, you have to first be expert on human relations. And it's the most complex uh, to be an expert in human relations. And I really admire the human relations team, HR team all over the world, who, uh, whose primary job is, is to get the best out of the people. And therefore, uh, in my career, I have always had great relationship with the HR team. 
because I always felt that they are an integral part of the business and they contribute a lot because without them, without manpower, without people, you cannot be successful. And HR has to play a very constructive role in getting the team to focus on what the CEO wants or the organization wants on the whole and uh, get everybody to think aligned and bring the goals, whatever targets have been set, uh, achieved in a defined time period. So it's very important. HR, uh, I have always had great relationships with HR when I was like a peer. And when I became the CEO, even then, uh, HR persons were always very close to me. We would like to know from you that uh, what has been, you know, so we are glad that you spoke so positive about the HR fraternity. But any one um, incident which you would like to recall where you felt that HR would have done better in terms of their deliverables? Yeah, this is, uh, uh, I won't name the organization, but then, you know, I, I became a CEO of this company and uh, I, uh, I went to, the, uh, to join in the company and in the initial uh, feedback uh, and analysis and understanding of the business, when I actually, I, I, I mean, obviously when you join a company, uh, you are aware of most of the things, but when you join as a CEO, your job is to go into the depth of things that what are, what are the things going right? What are the things not going right? And what we need to do in order to make the company grow higher than what it is growing uh, or, uh, or get the best of the situation. Now in this light, when I went and had a detailed discussion with the HR person over there, uh, the, I found one of the biggest uh, drawback and that was uh, that the diversity in the team was minimal. So they would feel that this uh, position is meant to be only dominated by uh, males and this position has to be only dominated by X, Y, Z. And as such in the organization, uh, the uh, contribution of the, like if, the, if you see the population is almost 50, 50 or 52, 48 uh, between male and female. And in my organization, it's almost like 98 and two. And, and I said, why? So the, the uh, usual, you know, HR, I mean, everybody, not just HR, everybody tries to defend what they have been doing. So they would say, oh, so this are, I mean, you know, it's engineering jobs. It is all about, you know, going into interacting with workers. You can't place, uh, you know, you can't use diversity over there and get females. It will be a trouble and all that. And, and you know, I have come from a background where I have uh, helped a company uh, form a full uh, line with only females working on it in an automobile field. So, so I, uh, obviously I would confront the HR, no, this is not true. It's not going to happen. I have seen in Japan, in, uh, in, in China, uh, I mean, almost like, uh, they're like 70 to 80% female, only 20 to 30% male in an automobile or a telecom industry. So the vision, the vision, and, and you know, there are certain times when you are working in an X uh, manner and you get used to of it. And then you don't accept the change because you have always worked in that direction. So I found that I confronted and made the changes. So I would say that this is one incident. I, I mean, I would like that comes to my mind straight away that, um, you know, it's a, like a thought process that I've been going for years. And, and I have a belief that, you know, this job can be done by only such persons and you don't want to give opportunity to new, new people. I've always believed in, uh, uh, you know, if you have to get a best output of your team, you should have a number of things, but this is one critical element, the diversity in the team, uh, and especially, you know, respect for females because of coming from the culture that we are, we are from India and, you know, we celebrate Navratris twice a year we pray to Goddess Durga and we do so many things. And when it comes to work, we change completely. And the, so I, I feel that, you know, you should give equal opportunity. You should never say that this job is meant for male and this job is meant for females. And going by all the experiences we have seen that females have actually overpowered in every field that you have given the opportunity, whether it is HR itself. So, I mean, this is just one point, and there's yeah, a number yes. of ways that you can. Uh, I'm, I'm most of my HR friends who would have been uh, listening to would have uh, been 
been feeling bit contrary because uh, the kind of um, organizations which we have come we have you know generally run a di gender diversity program in the organizations and uh, we are the torch bearers in terms of this program but uh, slowly and gradually you know we have seen the specifically that uh, some industries have become you know stereotyped for the gender and some industries have opened so i you know absolutely agree that as industry perspective we need to make a very unilateral decision not the industry taking this discussion forward uh, so this is about the hr team let us move to the big chair of the hr you know chro and you must have interacted to the head of hr's number of time in the board room and all uh, one quality of chro which you have admired over the period of years and what do you think you know what has been the impact of chro over last a decade you know since the business partner term has been coined and hr has become an integral part of the business you know some business uh, what do you think uh, in terms you know uh, intrinsic quality of a chro and where do you see a chro's uh, viability in a business in terms when he or she is chairing the board uh, members chair so uh, the you know performance how to improve the productivity and performance is the key task for every manager in the organization and uh, how does you get the productivity if you create an uh, working atmosphere where there is optimism you know there is a, a dream which can be achieved and uh, everybody believes in that dream and and everybody is uh, believing truly and then working and then action plan has been made so that you are working towards achieving that this is a, a place where you actually go and and everything will become uh, uh, optimistic and and if the the goals will start getting achieved you will take everything very positively even if you are uh, not able to do so then you make countermeasures uh, on the failures now what we expect from an hro or chro is to actually look after this aspect that every person who is who is in the organization how they are linked to the goals that the organization have how they have and he should be a very compassionate person you know i have seen people who have been termed as a dead wood you treat them well and you get a huge output from that person so i would see a chro as a very compassionate person when he sees a person whether he is a performer or a non performer he identifies the root cause it why he is performing and why he is not performing and then he creates an environment where a person wants to perform and give more output i like to give you a very small example here you know when i was i did my first uh, corporate job and uh, for the first time in my career when i became a manager uh, and when i became a manager i was working for this company escort and when you become a manager there was a customary in the organization to be uh, assigned an assistant to you so that those were the days when you know every manager had an assistant so today it's a luxury because uh, everybody is talking about lean and but then you know i was assigned a, uh, this person and when i interacted uh, with him i was very happy because you know first time that's like a very big position you're getting and and you, it's like a prestige that you now you are also getting an assistant now you know as some of the colleagues you know one person comes and says be careful this guy is very dangerous you know this guy was earlier assistant of a general manager you know he threw a hot cup of tea in face of the general manager and that is why he was pushed out and now he has been assigned to you now what we will feel you will feel you know oh ah, i mean is somebody trying to take revenge from me that's why this person has been assigned to me or there is something else what i can do now i interacted with the person and i said what is your uh, i just want to know from where he is what does he do what's his qualification and how long he has been working with the organization just a personal chit chat which normally hr persons will do so i uh, i did that and i realized that this person is overly over qualified for the job that he has been given he is an assistant but he has done masters uh, uh, twice so he is a double ma 
Now, if you ask a double MA, you will get a photo copy, obviously, at times you will get frustrated. And then he uh, reacted. Now, I spoke to him, I understood his needs. And then I said, besides this, okay, you have been assigned to me, you can do what uh, has been told by the company. But what is your interest level? What, what extra have you learned in all these years? Is there any interest level? And he said, yeah, yeah I love. I mean, those were the days where computers were like a, like what um, uh, today we are talking about, big uh, technologies coming in, artificial intelligence coming in. In, in the 90s, uh, computer was the same. A computer will destroy all jobs. There will be no jobs available. Uh, you know, everybody will lose jobs. So now this guy knew how to use computer. And said, so, okay, you know how to use computer. Great. Uh, have, uh, have you, so what can you do? And he said, sir, I can do whatever you say. So I said, okay. So I introduced him to the IT person. I said, I want him to do some data entry for the department. And so give him a seat in the IT. Now, this person who was an assistant who was supposed to sit like on a stool outside, now he's sitting in the IT and he is performing. He gave the output where he became one of the most important person in the IT department over the period of time. So I gave you this example from my personal life and my personal experience is that as a, every manager is supposed to have Whoever is assigned to you, whoever is available in your organization, you have to try to extract the best out of him. Maybe he's been, now he's been termed as not a great performer, but when you go into the depth of it, you will realize it's not his fault because he's not the right person at the right job. And therefore, when you give a slight importance to that person, the output multiplies. And this is what I would expect from CHROs. And this is what I see some of the great CHROs, they do that day in and day out. They, they are always there to support, to see that how I can get the best out of my people, whether they are entering the organization, whether they are performing to the organization, even when they are leaving the organization, how well do I treat the people? That is what a quality CHRO person I would envisage or I would expect to be. And, and that is the kind of a leader that I would always like to be associated with in the organization and who can be part of the board or you can even lead the organization. And today this, this become diminished. The difference earlier was he's a HR head, he's a you know sales head, he's this head and, and everybody is sitting. Now HR has like they are the business partners where they are not just supposed to do promotions and do a timely X, Y, Z listed, which has been, which can be easily outsourced. They are supposed to be the business partner where they have to ensure that the goals that the individual have taken gets achieved. And therefore, when you are getting so close to every manager where you're trying to get every manager achieve their goals, you can actually build yourself as a CEO and you can actually head the board. So that's an opportunity for a CHRO today with the open mind that we all um, have in the industry. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, some people just wrote me in a chat box that, you know, uh, why are we not discussing the COVID situation? <laughs> I will all come back to them and say that we are having a career planning session from a CEO where he is driving the HRs to become a CEO. And, you know, this can be the best platform because, you know, ideally, this kind of inspiration, Mr. Pankaj, is very important, specifically the self-belief. The CEO HROs, which I have interacted uh, and while leading a big team in current my organization, we generally follow, you know, I have seen all of them follow the principle of three C's to three P's. So the three C's is your communication, conduct, and connection, which moves to three P's is people, performance, and purpose. So while this journey of three P's and three C's, which we try to bridge together, you know, uh, and after speaking to you and getting your belief that we can become CEOs, I think some of them who are there listening to this live program will come back to us and say, you know, we have the aspiration to become a CEO. So we can manage finance because generally when we look at HRs and safety team, we are looked as uh, teams who are only uh, coming back to us for expenditures. You know, we are like walking uh, ATM banks and, you know, whenever anybody can draw money out of us and we are expenditures, but, you know, the analytics when we look back in terms of, you know, financial item is very important. Moving to this, you know, since one of my friend has asked for the COVID, so I will go back to the COVID. We have spoken a lot about COVID. We have heard COVID. Now we are coming out of COVID. What do you think in terms of financial and culture? Uh, COVID has transformed the organizations and how this situation will shape up in this financial year. Okay, 
uh, yeah, I'll, we will get to COVID. Before that, I just want to complete the last uh, thing that we were discussing for the CHROs, where uh, you know you are you have been uh, people are looking at you as an ATM is what you said that you are uh, seen as that you will provide some money to them, and which is a very good source. You know, a person who owns the ATM is the most important person. At home also, if the home ministry, the wife says no, no, then it is no. So the money where it lies, that's the most important person in the organization. Now, it all depends upon how you think yourself. I'm just an ATM, everybody is coming, with drawing money and going off, doing nothing. Or I have the most resource in the organization. And therefore, when I'm giving the resource to the person, I would say that, okay, you take it, but please give me the output also. I need this. And when you think on those lines, when anybody thinks, start thinking on that extra lines, that I, if I'm doing something which is a routine job, but can I think something extra? That can I align this person who's taking money from me to ensure that he achieves his target? And then, then you align yourself and take that. That is where, you know, the CHROs, those CHROs who are thinking like that would become the CEOs. Now, coming back to the COVID situation, it's a, it's a very alarming situation. You know, we all know that nobody was aware that something like this is going to happen. And in January, February, the life was at the peak. Everybody was doing normal. Industries were doing normal. Even in China, when things happened, we thought, oh, it's like there only. So the world, everybody caught by surprise by March end and then May, April, May. And as a result, you know, the situation became very grim. Now it is improving at least on the business because the lockdown is over in India. But still, we are not out. It is going to be a long haul, and the challenge will continue for us. Uh, under the circumstances, what is most important is, you know, the economy has really suffered from where, you know, the we were talking about a GDP, which will be like uh, going uh, anywhere from 5% to 8%. Uh, the government was talking about an 8 trillion economy. And in the next uh, few years, five years, seven years time. Now, all that has uh, suddenly got into where we are going to get negative GDP. We are also going to face a challenge where, you know, it will be the industries would undergo a huge change. What was aviation was a very dream uh, industry, but it was the worst hit during this time. And it will continue to be so with the challenge. There's so many uh, luxury products, automobile products got so severely hit. And, and, you know, these are the major economy factors. These are the major industry which contribute a lot to the overall economy. Under the circumstances, you know, you know the, there'll be so many, and these are not just the companies who are into this field. There are ancillaries, there are indirect outsource people working there. there are, so, so the, the, there's a huge population linked to that. And there is like, we just gave you two examples of the industry, but then there is a host of other industries which also suffered a lot. Once this thing gets over, or like we are getting, trying to get back to normalcy, you never know, again, another bout might come, the second round would come and everything comes to a standstill again. Now, what is most important at this time? What is going to, so the, every manager has to think in, at this time, first and foremost, that your company should survive. Forget about A, B, C, D of what you are looking after. You have to think on what you can do to support the organization so that the organization survives. Because if the situation continues for very long, the companies, there are many companies who will not have even income to pay the salaries. You know how difficult it was that when the government said that you have to pay salaries, you cannot cut salaries, and, and, and the companies were cash rich, they said, okay, it's a, it's a big strain, but we can do it. But then there are companies who have just started, companies who don't have the enough funds available with them, they can't pay. So what happens to them? All the smaller organizations who are ancillaries to the big uh, organizations, many of them may or may not survive if this uh, continues. I think if you analyze the decision of the government, they if it, they were only thinking about the people, they would have extended the lockdown again. But they thought about the economy. They thought about the companies that, you know, if we continue even further, there will be no money available with companies. There will be no availability of funds, even though the government will face the challenge because GST is not coming in. People's income is, will go down. 
when their taxes would get reduced, when even government will not have money, how would they run? So the key and the most important thing for every manager in the organization is that the ball should be rolling. And therefore, we have to look at this crisis time very differently from what we were looking at earlier. I understand that the entire uh, HR fraternity, I mean, there's nothing new. Everybody understands this is a very serious situation. But what have we done at the to contribute to uh, what have you done in order to contribute to the to the organization in such a way that the organization survives or thrives? So there's been a challenge in many. Uh, there's been a challenge in some industries. Of, of the, the, the participant to this. Sorry, sir. So the foremost thing is to make the organization survive and sail through this troubled time. Uh, the organization uh, has to, or and then there might be opportunities at this time. So you, you, the top management has to be, whether it is finance or HR, has to be very close to the CEO to see that can what can we do? Like if you are into a heavy industries, what can you do at this time when there is a total lockdown? Say for example, what did Mahindra and Mahindra did? Mahindra and Mahindra came out and said that okay, we are experts in automobile. And the country needs right now ventilators. Can, can I make ventilators? So the engineers who had never thought of getting into the medical field, they designed and created the ventilators that in case if there is a need, these ventilators can be uh, produced and can be supplied to the government and medical uh, uh, hospitals and other requirements. How do you deal? I mean, there's so many things Everything is on, was on a standstill, but there was a shortage of masks. There was a shortage of, uh, uh, um, I mean, all these uh, essentials like uh, cleaning your hand, uh, sanitizers. Companies, the intelligent people, they, they immediately switched to this. They sourced it and they started supplying and making some money out of it. So you have to always, so in times of this, this such circumstances, whether in you are in finance or you're in HR, you have to think out of the box to say, these are the areas, my core areas are blocked, nothing is going to happen. But if, if the company has to survive, then what can we do right now? Everybody is sitting at home. Nobody can come out of the home right now. This is a total lockdown, like nobody was seen on the road. But you, do, you know that there are a lot of companies who got into trouble, and, but there are a lot of companies who use this opportunity and they created huge business at this time because they saw these opportunities and they did something extraordinary out of the box at this time and they got huge business. There are certain companies, there are a lot of people who have lost jobs during this time. There are a few people who have got promotion during this time also, during the COVID time. So what, what can we do? What are you thinking? What are you doing at this time is the most critical uh, for every manager. Uh, Ashish, you are, you are on mute, I think. I can't hear you. Shefari, can you hear? Uh, I can't hear Ashish. It, it, it appears, Ashish, that you are on a mute.
person you are. Yeah, I'm back. I think, uh, you know, I'm sorry participants for this trouble, but uh, we are living in a world which is more digital now. So digital will have its own challenges and we need to cope up to that. That was so great, uh, Mr. Pankaj, to hear that, you know, in terms of how we have to, so what I understood that innovation is very important for the organizations. And the second is in terms, uh, most importantly is that uh, in terms, it, this survival is the very important aspect, specifically for some industries which have been deeply impacted like hospitality, tourism, and uh, your uh, yeah. other yeah. segments which are related to service industries. Moving back, you know, since you mentioned about crisis, my next question comes, crisis management is very important aspect of any life or a business. So, you know, in terms of your experience, can you share, you know, in terms, COVID is something which we all have seen you know, together as in a lifetime and hopefully we might not see it again. But uh, in terms of your experience, specifically either it can be one from your life or one can be from your business, an acute crisis which you have come through and how you have taken a decision which has, you know, sailed you through that. Yeah, so I'll give you an example of uh, one of the organizations that I was working for, Hero Motors. I was the sales and marketing head of the organization. And uh, we were in an industry where, uh, you know, Hero Honda was there, which were into the motorcycle segment, and Hero Motors were looking after um, the mopeds and uh, scooters business. So uh, the moped business was uh, that was led by the model called Hero Book. Um, many of you must have heard about this or used the product. And then there are like, there were others like Hero Easy, Hero Winner, scooters, which were launched. Now our crisis was that uh, the motorcycles were becoming very popular because of the high fuel efficiency. Uh, and, uh, and our product, the mopeds and scooters uh, were becoming challenged because uh, the prices were uh, high as compared to motorcycle because uh, that time, you know, the cost of input was increasing for everybody, but motorcycle, because it was going into the mass production, the uh, players like Bajaj and Hero, they were narrowing the gap with the mopeds. So the decline in the industry started happening to the tune of 30 to 35% year on year. So you decline from 100 to 65, and then 65 to say 55 and 50, and then, then that slide started happening. Now, uh, it's like a very similar to the crisis. I would say that every company is expecting a 30 to 40 percent downfall in the business uh, for some period at least. Um, and some companies feel that by 2021, uh, everything will become normal or maybe end of 21. But by that time, you will lose 30 to 40 percent of the business. And if you are lucky, maybe you can arrest some um, more, like maybe 20 percent down. And in, in uh, extreme situations, you can be at par or even grow. Now we had the similar situation. This is, I'm talking about years 1999 to 2002. It's almost like 20 years back. And uh, we, we were facing the similar challenge, though there was no COVID. So we were freely, there were other restrictions are not there. We could move out, we could uh, go anywhere, but the customers were moving away from us. And so we thought that what should we do? And we realized that uh, we have to think something different now. So we were making product which was uh, largely into the space of uh, students. Europook was a very light uh, moped and it was doing very well. And we analyzed the entire country and we found that we are leaders in the North India, but in South India, we are doing not much. And, and, we, and if we explore the South Indian market, we can do very well. But when we went to the South Indian market, we saw that they uh, they were using product not for like the north people were the students were using it south may it was more of a utility where people were using it like a load carrier i mean it was unimaginable for us to think about that you know these people will load something like a small tractor on a moped and then they will do the business there a lot of pictures that we saw a lot of actual realities we saw and and now we know that uh, and, and we, we checked out with the motorcycle companies that do you think that you would be able to take share of that more, uh, that moped segment? Oh, so no, no, we have done the research and that segment of uh, customer says, no, irrespective motorcycle, I won't be able to uh, use the product. Why? Because in motorcycle, there's a full tank in the front and then you are riding the bike. Uh, 
uh, in those mopeds, there was a, like a curve in the front, so you can keep something between your legs. There was a lot of place to store things. Uh, though it is much smaller, much narrower, but they would never go to a motorcycle. So we thought that this is a market which is going to stay, whereas uh, the student market, the moment they feel, oh, it's become like uh, more up market is to be on a motorcycle than a moped, this market will shrink. So we devised a strategy. We made a product um, in line with that uh, uh, southern market, and, and we launched the product in no time. And we launched it uh, with a very great marketing campaign uh, stating that Do Payoki Lorry. So we launched a moped and we called it Do Payoki Lorry, that you can buy this. And then we created very nice uh, uh, commercials to uh, be there and suddenly where we were declining by 35 percent or so now we are growing by 20 to 30 percent year on year so this is what i would say uh, uh, example that comes to my mind which i have actually done it so i know what it takes when it's a very negative environment and where you everything you think nothing is going to happen and what do you do then that is uh, one example i i know the example that i have given to you is a very a uh, unique example where the, uh, the market is going down and you are doing something, though it is not exactly comparable to COVID because there is nothing comparable to COVID because it never happened like this, that the entire globe is sitting at home and, uh, and nothing is going in the marketplace. But then, you know, even in this circumstances, I've seen uh, companies who have really grown, they have acquired new customers, they have got uh, businesses going, uh, the companies were importing uh, mobile phone and selling mobile phone, suddenly they started importing masks, suddenly they start importing. So how to tweak your business in, in times of adversity? What is going? What can you do? That thought process, if you have, then the business will survive. So crisis gives an opportunity, you know, for the real managers to come out, think differently and do something differently so that you can get a better output. Thank you so much. I think that was really motivational and you put a silver lining to this peculiar situation as well because as HR people, while we are managing our organizations and people, we always go back and tell them to invest in your learning, invest in relationship building, invest in your uh, skill development. This is the time which you have got. So utilize that time. It's an opportunity. Also to the point, you know, while we speak about crisis, digitalization has happened, you know, somewhat which we have never imagined. Why it happened through a push factor rather than a pull, but we embrace that change. Coming back to organizations, you know, most of the organizations now, most of us are working from home or are stagnated at home, you know, using different mediums. Transformation is very important in terms of digitalization. And we have to agree that it comes with the cost. So as a CEO, you know, if you are given a scenario that you have to run, you know, since you're running uh, this particular company and, you know, HR works that I have to spend say, X amount on transforming this entire communication channel with my colleagues and in the company. How do you look in crisis period and investment opportunity, specifically with HR where you know, uh, transformation is proposed? Yeah, so it's a very difficult question, you know. At a time when you are uh, in an organization where there's a crisis, where there's no money coming in, would you invest at this time? Now, it all depends upon what is the output I will get out of that. So if I, if I invest at this time and if I see that with this investment, I can get some additional business, I would do so. In the times of COVID, a situation like this, all organizations would look at, divide everything in short term and long term. So if I have to do any investments for long term, I would delay it slightly. Okay, let me do something which is like, let me sail through this. This is like a blackout period. Let us get out of it. And then we'll look, we'll look at investment. Or if I'm looking at short term, okay, immediately if we do, this is the benefit, then that benefit analysis has to be done because I have to pay salaries because government is not paying them the salaries. We are in India, we are not in US. So it's not that, okay, let everybody be laid off. The government will pay the salary, use that money to get into a new technology so that we can work from home and we use, build this technology. A lot of people talk about this, uh, that, you know, US may this happen, um, uh, Europe may this happen. No, every circumstances are different. Their circumstances are different. There, the economies are, the government have enough funds available with them. In our case, our government is not that rich that they can afford to pay the salaries of everybody. 
So uh, the situation is different for them. And in, in our organization, if somebody comes and says, okay, uh, can I invest and get this uh, built up so that everybody who's working from home can get on a similar platform? Um, you know, I would say, why not use Zoom, what we're doing right now? Use Zoom, use uh, this uh, uh, team and whatever is available for free, or you take a paid uh, um, investment into it rather than investing into your own technology at this point of time. Just use and show me the results. That, okay, if you do, if I do this investment, you would give me the returns. CEOs is a very different, you know, many times you would go with a proposal and CEO will say no, and you will understand that, oh, why is saying no, this is, this should be done, everybody else is doing it. But CEO is like wearing many hats. He has to get the funds to pay the salaries, he has to get the funds to, uh, you know, foot the long-term investment, short-term investments, pay the factories, pay, uh, you know, the, all the rentals, banks, financial institutions, he has to do everything. Now, if I and if I have, like, if there is a cash-rich company who has enough funds and who has made huge money, like, this is not a very big uh, amount. But for a company, a startup company, you say, no, why should I invest into this? I've got this much amount of money. I would better do it. If I would only invest in things where I get the output. So this is a very tricky question. And uh, therefore, I'm giving you a tricky answer only because it's very situational. Uh, I, I am very happy, you know, in this tricky question also, you are convincingly uh, convinced HR that what is short term and what is long term. Somebody wrote me in the chat box that why you are act, acting devil's advocate. You know why this question is. So my answer to them is, you know, whatever we are having a discussion, you know, specifically as you correctly analyze that HR people might sound very sweet upfront. But everybody has their own emotions, specifically, you know, the angle which you think and which we think as HR leaders are very different at a point. And this is a journey, you know, which you have given us at the start that you should uh, go and target the journey of a CEO. Because we generally see every rejection that the other person has not understood. So maybe uh, most of the companies require a CEO like you because they want to be convincingly convinced in terms <laughs> Going beyond this, you know, in terms uh, specifically, I understand, you know, why we talk about people agenda, you know, moving at the aspect. What has been your people agenda in the, the organization which you have managed? You know, everybody, we always say, you know, we are a human race and, you know, uh, like my mother narrates that, you know, people and people interaction will always be there, but the banks of river might never meet. So that's how, you know, we cannot ignore what has been your people agenda in terms uh, in the previous organizations or currently when you uh, interact with students, employees, consultants, how do you, what is your people agenda? How do you manage people? Uh, see, the, to manage people, there are, you know, there are laid, uh, you know, experienced people share, we have to do this, this, this. My things are very simple. I don't use any jargon, but I just say, please, please have a dream. Everybody should have a dream. So I sell dreams to my team. So I sell dreams to my people who have just entered in the organization. Won't you like to become an HR head or a sales head? I as a sales head or HR head, I will sell a dream. Won't you want to become a CEO? And so I will always give them a challenge so that they start looking at some bigger picture of their life and they have a goal in front of them. And then I, I get a more output. I have been fortunate that all the organizations that I have worked, uh, especially where I was like a business head or a CEO, I have always nurtured my team in such a way that many of my uh, subordinates have become CEOs subsequently in organization, whether it was telecom or it was Yamaha or it is Polaris. I mean, everywhere I have nurtured my number two. Number two, not just number two, but the second layer of team. And I have seen that uh, when you give them the challenge, nothing looks small to them. And, and when they start working to, when they have that sort of a mindset, oh, I can also become a CEO. Oh, then, then, you know, you they start giving you more output. So selling dreams and making everybody realize that, you know, you can also do whatever you have dreamt or you have not dreamt so far. I, I use a very simple technology with the students because from my experience, uh, I have seen that dreams, uh, if you, even if you go to my blog, pankajdube.net, you will find there that I've written dreams do come true. 
So what I believe that whatever dreams that you set in impossible dreams, it will be, be achieved, provided you have a dream. And then I share certain things like you sh all the dreams should have a date. I will achieve this dream by this date. And the moment you put a date to something, I, I have experienced that that dream becomes a reality. Again, you have to do a lot of things. It's just not the uh, that you make a dream and do nothing about it. Obviously, it will not get achieved. You make a dream, put a date, and then you do have a lot of action plan to support that dream. Okay, you will see that you will it will become a reality and you will become successful. So I have used this very effectively in my team, and I have always stood by my team to say, okay, if they face a challenge, if they fail, I tell them, you know, all. All big achievers in life have always failed. But when they failed, they did not say anything bad about themselves. They respected themselves and they just figured out why I failed, what I was supposed to do, which I did not do, or what I was not supposed to do, which I did. Just differentiate that, learn from the failure, stand up again, and again work. So, so failure to me is like a part of parcel of the life. And so I, these are simple things that I teach my team. My, these are simple things that I invest a lot of time with the students. I, I do uh, sessions on dream realization with the students. I, I love to hear two ways, like the other person talking to me, telling me about his dream, what is your dream? And I can guide and help them realize the dream. So my thing is that I, I would like that uh, most of the people in the world, at least in my country, should have big dreams and they should achieve. And if I can be of any help to anybody, I am always there. And I keep interacting within the organization. I keep interacting outside the organization. I never stop. So even if I'm working in an organization which is a five-day week or a six-day week, my sixth or a seventh day is with the students. Whether I'm going to the college or whether the college is coming to me through web series. But I, I, I love doing that. I love investing time with them. Great, I, that was, uh, I'll come back to this summary at the end of this session. I will park this uh, very, very intensive thought aside. You know, coming back to the major change, we talked about changing in terms of, you know, adapting. Change management is very aspectual in terms of organizations. We all want change, but we are very adverse to change. Specifically, we believe that, uh, you know, top business leaders are very hard not to crack. And they will not change if we go any proposal. They will say, you know, organizations may change. Karo. But the change is always from top to bottom. It is not from bottom to top. How do you advise? You know, my final question for the HR leaders is how do you advise them that how do you bring out a change? Specifically, when you have to bring out a change in somebody, who will initiate the change in the organization? Now, see, see number one, if you are proposing to your boss or to anybody, that let's bring the change. You have to be convinced first. Sometimes I've seen people coming and advising for a change, but they themselves are not convinced. There's the moment the boss says, and a, and a CEO is always a devil's um, advocate. You know, he would always say, what if you fail? Now you yourself are not convinced, you immediately give up. Yes, sir, you are right. If you fail, we will <laughs> your proposal is gone then and there. You have to always think about that, okay, if you are proposing something, you should be very passionate about that. You should believe in it that it's going to happen. You are ready to put your, you know, everything on top. Okay, if this does not have you cut my finger, I will make sure that this achieves. You know, the boss will say, okay. Then he will come to commercials. Okay, what is the investment? What is the returns? CEO is all about that. CEO has to look at everything from a perspective that what will I give to my shareholders? What will I give to my uh, bosses? What will I give to my uh, employees? What I give to the customers? So if you convince me that, okay, <clears throat> the organization will not increase in revenue, but your customer satisfaction will skyrocket or your employees will become highly motivated. And with the highly motivated uh, employees, you can achieve more dreams. If you come out with such proposals, I don't think any CEO would say no. CEO is, you know, there are, there are different kinds of pressures and every person deals differently. Even at our heads, you would know that when your pressure is coming in, you will deal differently. CEOs will also have a different pressures. Everybody moves, fluctuates. Sometimes he's the top of the world, sometimes he's not. Now, when you are 
uh, when you are faced with this situation and you're somebody is proposing to you uh, okay make this huge change in the organization and you are not at the top of your mood and and, and so you he, you will always cross question more and and then how strongly you feel about this dream that you are proposing the change that you are proposing you know i uh, it's not just very long uh, I, i think about 10 years back or 11 years back today everybody is talking about digitization but 10 years back or, or maybe 12 years back the hr department used to say block this site no facebook in office no no internet no social media because it's a waste waste time wastage in the office i used to say no if somebody is going on a facebook he's if he's personal chatting or if he's doing something for the organization no he's is uh, i mean he's posting his company's brand and you are banning it for 8 hours then your workforce what they can do you are reducing the output now that change the organizations with the, the change and they understood the change they brought and implemented at that point of time they flourished today everybody is doing it no this is no brainer to say that you give access to facebook or twitter in the office everybody says any please do it uh, that, so that was the change in the mindset 12 years back today it has become a norm today work from home is a big challenge you know before covid if i come sir i want to work from home for three months i am not from the it industry by the way if i am coming from that it industry were following it the hr person would reject no 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 how is this possible now if your person sitting next to you also say my entire office will be working from office how do we change that mindset today if i go back and to the hr manager to say sir i want to work from home you will say oh wow great uh, we, you did very well during the this period and you are entitled i know that you give very good output in this period that mindset today so this is a great opportunity for us to think why should we have so high cost of office why should we pay so high rent to of office and increase the cost of the organization can we make profit there and let some of the people or most of the people you know work from home ensure and invest in the technology that you are talking about so that they, you can effectively monitor the output from everybody sitting at home that cuts down the time for people to move around it cuts down the cost of the organization this cuts down the number of other expenses direct or indirect of the organization so these are some like the challenge comes you pick out the opportunity out of that work from home is one every organization should rethink about how we should use this even the government should think that you know they say that okay you have to if to you have to start up a company you should have this much uh, investment in office where is your registered office where is this so many rules regulations are there that the people get oh if i have to do so much then uh, let's let's do job only why should we become an entrepreneur but if you simplify it if you say that people are working from home and you know why can't a home be a registered company address and, and make that small change and, and everything follows so what is very important is that you know in times of crisis in terms of problems uh, facing you have to come out with the mindset which has always been there and see what is the new norm and how and fast you can implement those new uh, processes and bring that change because change is the only constant you know what i told you that 30 years 20 years back you know computer was a big problem and it was like a big this is a huge change i was because i knew ms office my bosses were scared of me why because he knows how to use the computer <laughs> today, today the situation is different where if i say that i know artificial intelligence people will say oh that means that if anything happens he will get a job everybody else will lose the job you know so this is what you have to see that what is the latest technology what it is and you have to learn from all of that and come out with the best output for the answer to my uh, question that can be summarized in two lines one is be convinced before you convince anybody and always knock the door of the ceo when the weather is good <laughs> <laughs> so moving back to the last segment of our uh, particular this uh, you know wonderful it's uh, difficult for me to even close down but we all have a interest of time so why will we go back a very important uh, you know it's a uh, question both for employees and the students 
most of the students specifically i address them as youngest than those who are in final year we are eyeing some placements due to this situation you know there has been a hit in the placement you know most of them are in terms of turbulence what they do about their careers second is most of the employees who have lost jobs or had pay cuts in certain industries due to this what you know in terms it is very difficult to give them an advice that you know it's very easy when we say them motivate them but what all we can do in terms of to help them so that in this particular situation after we weather this out they come back as more successful uh, individuals both for the students and for the employees uh, so again you know it's all about uh, how are you thinking what is your mindset when this this anything happens like suppose that i am a student i am just passing out what is the mindset i have today so people who already have a job they are losing jobs i am just a fresh uh, management student or engineering student who's going to give me job i will not get a job now if i have that mentality what will happen is the organization i mean i would not even apply to some positions maybe i would not try to appear in an interview because i feel that i won't get selected but believe me there are organizations who have cut cost they have the jobs still there the organization is right now going through a phase where they have their expenses have to be cut down their uh, their revenue is going down so the profit margin is less they don't have the money to pay the salaries but the job is still there they have to get that job done what they will look at is a lower cost of the people if they have something which is being done by a 5 years or a 10 years experienced person who obviously comes at a higher cost if a new person comes in and he can perform the same task and my chros can help him to get the same output or maybe in the range of 5 to 10 percent deviation i can get output i will hire that person so what is the mindset of the student if those students who are looking at an opportunity he will go and join and he will get opportunity right now those students uh, who have just joined i mean i i know people who got promoted during the covid period you know my own daughter she joined an organization in december yesterday she got her promotion in from december to may as uh, now june sorry so it's about 6 months she got promoted and and what why because during this time they worked the team worked so hard they acquired new customers now it's all about the thinking that a person is doing so if if i feel that the world is collapsing everything will go down everything will become dead there's no point working just relax and chill i mean you will do that i firmly believe that whatever you think will become a reality if you think that everything is going to collapse maybe the world will not collapse but for you it will collapse but if you think that no i will make that change i will do something different and i will find out opportunities where is the opportunity right now so if the person is looking at the opportunity he will get an opportunity the person who is looking at no there will be no jobs therefore he closes his mind completely he will not get a job now coming back to people who have lost jobs now that's very very difficult you know they have lost jobs but probably it is good for the organization it may not be good for the individual because if it, they have not lost job that com- the entire company will close down if the entire company closed down then not just he will lose the job the entire team will lose the job he the chances for him to get a new job will become even bleaker to say that oh that company is shut down so there's terrible problem with all the employees of the organization don't hire from that company because the company is shut down so it's better that your company survives you are out so what is the thought process again you know i have lost job but my organization still survives so that's good let me let the organization survive so that when i go i can give the reference it's because of xyz reason that the company was going through a crisis unfortunately i was part of it but my skill sets are this i am able to give contribution to others there may be a gap of one month two month three months but it cannot be forever i haven't seen anybody that you know you were working in the corporate field you lost the job and then for the rest of the life they never got a job i haven't seen even a single person who who has given up the job or he become an entrepreneur himself he start doing something big his his choice but if is anybody is looking for an opportunity 
he doesn't get an opportunity i don't know even one person in my life who has not got this opportunity he gets something or the other if you don't have a suppose that your skills that you having right now it's gone there's no demand for that skill set acquire new skills when we were born what skill set we had nothing one when we got out know, past of the school what skill set we had you know, x y z very small when we went to the graduation when we went to post graduation when we started working that is when we started acquiring the skills why can't we acquire new skills today so uh, i know it is it's a gyan so it might appear to be very heavy for people who have lost their jobs uh, i know it is a great pain and it's very difficult but at the same time i would say that believe in yourself everybody is hugely capable everyone i don't i haven't met a person who i can say that he's useless and he can't do anything i have been i mean i have i have people who have told me that i have got work out of the dead people dead wood that's the word that has been used so why because you know everybody is capable you have to just identify your own capability you have to respect yourself okay i lost the job so what but i am this capable I, i know my capability i will get a job again then you you i mean it is this time there is nothing happening you can't give the interview also we become spiritual start thinking positive read books on positivity read books on optimism go to youtube listen to great leaders acquire the skills during this time the moment job market opens or lockdown opens from tomorrow you you will be called for some job or the other that was indeed great nothing short you know the only word which i come back and you told about ki logo ko shayad gyan lag sakta hai मेरे हिसाब से ज्ञान वही लोगों का सुनते हैं जिनके पास ज्ञान होता है एंड कमिंग फ्रॉम सीईओ यू नो दैट्स व्हाई यू नो समबडी आस्क मी अगेन इन द चैट बॉक्स दैट व्हाई यू नो वी गो बैक एंड टेल बिकॉज़ इन आवर कॉर्पोरेट लाइफ वी हैव लीडर्स एंड फॉलोअर्स व्हेन वी यू नो एज पीयर ग्रुप से समथिंग दैट अपीयर्स टू बी यू नो नॉट मच इंपैक्टफुल but when it comes from the टॉप बिजनेस लीडर्स स्पेसिफिकली दे नो द बिजनेस दे हैव सीन द बिजनेस दे हैव रन द बिजनेस that is absolutely phenomenal to get that motivation and you know the series was about this in terms of uh, the motivation how we can go back in this times there are other series which are happening but you know this is was the essence and you know while we started this uh, session before i wrap up a couple of rapid fire questions we were now you know how do we start how do we present because you know such senior leadership coming what do we ask them we ask them gdp we ask them finance we ask them a pnl but what we wanted is the true essence of life you know how they have become successful before we uh, you know uh, end then i do a summary i have some rapid fire questions from you uh, but these have to be answered in two or three words only so how do you reboot yourself uh by spending quality time with family uh what brings you back in action my dreams my thinking about my dreams make me back to action what is your hobby i love singing and astrology i will park this aside and get back to you personally on that <laughs> <laughs> food with rejoices you i love uh, high calorie foods like uh, chole bhature samosas so it's all about high calorie and the last of the question what uh, what is you off what puts you off ah uh, the uh, dishonest people who who are trying to be very good in front of you but then you know they they don't mean it so i really get put off by people who who come they commit and they don't really mean it it really puts me off thank you so much i you know uh... we can go in on and on but we had a time limit of this one hour honestly pankaj bhai i started you know and we do not take this session specifically when we start this is an interaction between an hr and a ceo to bridge this journey and the gap together and when i started you know when i heard when i spoke to you a couple of times i thought how it would be so difficult to interact you know because you are very meticulous you are to the point and while me and shefali were discussing we were finding such a you know tough discussion honestly which uh, i you know parked last time in terms you know in the summary 
for me i specifically this you know journey of interaction with ceos you know we had a lot of uh, impression uh, change which we had which were not correct and why we take this journey forward for me personally and i believe for all the audience who were there and you know live on youtube who were witnessing first session where uh, you know mr ajit menon pgim ceo talked about empathy and today you spoke about dreams you know we at this age where so many technologies there people are out in the market they have all the gadgets one thing which we all uh, you know uh, require that we will never say we don't require this coaching and today you really coach this session saying you know achieving your dreams definitely we have to act to achieve that but one important take away from my you know this uh, discussion with you is more than knowing you personally has been uh, great in terms of understanding what you bring you know we we have become more relaxed when we interact with ceos now honestly and now when we go back you know we will say you know we have people who can coach us and you also covered that we need to be better human beings and specifically give a dream to everybody uh thank you will be to uh, less for us to uh, from both sampark and young minds and me and shefadi personally uh thank you so much mr pankaj for giving your valuable time in coming on this dais i believe you know this has been one of my uh, very important discussions with the business leader where people have uh, will come back and go and think you know we can do it we will do it and there is an opportunity to do it So thank you for all the positivity which you shared with us. I believe the positivity grows with you more, and we will look back to have you again for some other session where we, you know, discuss. But uh, this was great, Mr. Pankaj, and I thank uh, Shefali, my dear friend, for you know we take this uh, journey forward. I would like you to share your experience. How did you enjoy with an HR leader who is cornering you, and you have to answer them. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ashish. It was really a pleasure, and thanks to Shefali for getting me here. And uh, it's always a pleasure, pleasure to interact with the CHRO because, as I said, you know, if you have to really get something going, you have to deal with the human beings in the right manner. You have to get them to do the best output. It's all about manpower, manpower, and manpower. And and HR is all about that. So. i love to interact with the the people and and especially with the hr team so uh, i also uh, really enjoyed this conversation and uh, i will be very happy to be helping out any of you if you i am available on social media i am very accessible person so you can reach out to me and i will like that each one of you grow in your life and many of the chros best wishes to become ceos namaste and thank you so much uh, mr pankaj for your valuable time thank you everybody Thank you everybody participants for your kind patient hearing